Wowzers! Wowzers! The noise! It is shocking! Shocking noise! Uh, uh, we lost, we lost, we've lost the front. We've lost the front of our. We lost the front of our sail. But oh no, it's just not really loose. So the front of our sail is falling out. Wow! Oh god! I'm getting thrown around a little bit here. Uh, What a night. We've uh, we've turned we've turned our anchor light on. We've put a whole load of solar power torches, dotted them all around the boat so we're visible. We've turned all of our lights on inside the boat in all the cabins that are empty because they illuminate through the port lights on the outside. We've put a steaming light on. We put a deck light. We put every single light on apart from our navigation lights, just so people aren't confused that we're moving. Wow! Oh my god! Oh my goodness! This is insane. Like it, I'm not really scared. Maybe ignorance is bliss. Cause I feel like we're on a solid mooring. We've got a lot of lines oh, yeah, around Yeah, I mean, it. I feel like oh, there's but, a little bit of comfort being on that mooring. But God, if anything fails, we are not far from those rocks. No, we're very close to the rocks. Uh, yeah. Sugar. Sugar. I've never known anything like this. I'm going to take the GoPro outside and see what else I can see there. Appears to be more drama going on. We've had a helicopter fly overhead. There's searchlights going off everywhere. So I'm not sure if anything we can do to help, but you know, if someone's in the water or something's coming towards us, I just have the boat hook ready and strap in, go stand on the end of the boat for a moment just to see. Yeah, just see what's up. I don't think I've ever been felt seasick at anchor before. Yeah. I feel seasick now. I feel sick with nerves. I'm shaking. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe I'm sick with nerves. It's blowing a hooli. Where's your tether? Have you got it? Okay. Here's my tether. You good? Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. The solar panels are right. They're actually doing it right. Mark them. Ah. <laughs> Holy smokes! Woo! Is it coming back?
ourselves up but you can't see any of the other you, you can't see any of the other boats so god knows a boat is dragging or if you're swinging close to it i mean I, I, god knows what you'd be meant to do in that case but i thought it was leaning right over the bow Chafe here. Oh. I just want this to be over. Oh wow, I think they've broken free, haven't they? They snapped free. Yeah. So that sail's got loose on that boat and they've snapped free. Oh shit, here yeah, it comes. Yeah, let's everyone up on deck. Is anyone on that boat though? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. I don't want to put it in their face though, because this is a bright light. Oh wow. Yeah, they're all shouting. I wonder if they ran aground. It looks like they've got no steerage or anything. Is it still coming this way? I don't know, I just don't want to shine it in their faces. Yeah, it's got the bow towards us. Heading straight for us. Okay, I need my jacket. I need some fenders. Okay, fenders are all up there. We're going towards the rocks. That was close, but I feel for them. Oh, wow. <coughs> I don't know how much of this the camera's really going to pick up. It's just, it's it's almost pitch black out there. Um, the wind has just been so insane. Like my, oh, I'm shaking. Yeah, the adrenaline. Somebody's sails just been ripped out of their boat, and uh, and they're in this anchorage, just flying around, almost wildly flying around. There's not an awful lot of room in here as it is and it looked like the boat was just totally out of control but it looks like somebody's managed to get control of it um somebody else has been uh made a radiated in somebody else has snapped off of their mooring and ended up on the rocks um gosh this is insane even you know we were like oh it might be uncomfortable but at least we're on a mooring at least we'll be safe and you are really not you know one of our mooring lines has snapped we had three on um, someone else's their mooring line has broke and they've run aground so, and, and, and on top of that there's there's boats that have dragged anchor I mean we're not just talking dragged flying like a pinball machine around the anchorage so even if you're lucky enough to be one of the people that stays put that doesn't mean you're out of the woods you, you're very susceptible to being hit by somebody else yeah do you see how fast yeah, the boat that's is just... moving yeah. And, and oh, that was insane. And because obviously, as they turned around, they had full pelt in their engine as they came around away from the rocks. That shot them down this way with yeah, the yeah. wind, with the tide, and their engine. There was like a torpedo heading and our way. And because they got like, their sail all over the place, yeah. they must. I oh, just feel for them. I know. What can you do though? Like, you, you, you're almost. You've just got to kind of. You just got to hope for the best yeah. for them. You know, fender up the boat. Try not to get. Like, yeah, if they come towards us, we've got to protect our own boat. Like, but, yeah, how much are you going to... I mean, the speed they were going, you know, your fender's no, only going yeah, to do... So, you know, your fender's there if they gently tap, but that was going at speed. I think I'm going to have to sit on deck. I, I mean, I haven't been able to see at all anyway. <laughs> Welcome oh, we've to got, the, the other side. <laughs> we've got two hours till sunrise, so... Oh, man. after the night before. It's about seven o'clock and things seem to be calming down a bit. I just want to show you 
from here, from this far, I would take you out there in the dinghy, but it just doesn't. It's a bit rambunctious, the sea state out there. But I want to show you a couple of things that have occurred. A couple of boats have definitely uh, run aground. They've dragged their moorings. They're mooring boys. They've, they've either snapped or dragged. I think one of them's dragged. I don't know about the other one. Might have snapped a chain. But this boat... <laughs> It's boring run aground. If you can just see over the rocks there, yeah, just to the right of that castle, you see the mast behind the rocks, and that boat has come aground. We need to assess our damage um, if we have any because we ran aground. Um, so at the moment we don't we don't know, uh, but happy to update our status. Over. so hard to believe that this is actually the same place as the anchorage we were in just six hours ago. I'm awake, Carly's still getting some much needed sleep and uh, neither one of us really had a great deal of sleep. I managed to doze a tiny bit throughout all that, Carly zero, so I thought I'd come and talk to you guys out here though. It's still windy enough that I don't know how the microphone's going to be able to cope with this. Hopefully it does alright with my little microphone mods. Amazing. Paradise to hell, back to something approaching paradise again. What a fickle beast the cities are. Have we learned anything from this escapade? Yes. The city isles, beautiful. If you've never been, come see it, explore love it enjoy it it's amazing um we thought we'd be safe on a mooring boy it's less than a year old the harbour master's like no that's not going anywhere i don't know we we were on the inside of the mooring boys as well so we felt that the external mooring boys would act as a kind of buffer between us and anchored boats and essentially we, we got lucky i think is the upshot um, two boats dragged their moorings and one's now, well, two are aground, one looks like it's washed up on the rocks. The crew seem to have abandoned ship because uh, there's, there's no control or anything there. Um, we had a boat careering towards us in the night, sail flapping everywhere and they were probably trying to motor out of trouble, dodging boats and rocks all along here. It was a miracle they made it out in one piece, but the speed they were going, it was very... It was, it was expected, I mean, you know, we had 60, 70 knots of wind, so they were obviously fighting just to not get wrecked and uh, came quite close to us in the process. So the buffer thing, not such, not, not, not so much. Uh, so my advice really would be, uh, yeah, enjoy the good weather, make the most of it. And when it turns bad, and I mean really bad, head back to the mainland, tuck yourself up in a river, hide and respect the forces of nature because I don't think I've ever felt as infinitesimally small and helpless as I did last night as I'm stood on deck in the wind and the howl the howling wind and the rain with a fender in my hand wondering is this even going to do anything for this boat that's jutting towards me at seven eight knots probably not So after moving Kadoa around to a new spot, we're now sitting right next to the island that this poor catch ran aground on during Storm Everett. Now the tide's back out, we're able to walk right over to it and have a really close look to try and ascertain just, just how challenging this might be to refloat. I mean, it's punched a pretty big hole it's in it, hasn't it? Hole, isn't it? It's not gone all the way look through. Look how it's scraped through. Wow, look how many layers of fiberglass. 
That's got so many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like it's warm pretty bad, but. Oh, so we've got the bottom of the rudder, skeg hung rudder, a lot to be said for that, but yeah. look, again, so much fiberglass has been torn off, but it's still there. I think it's safe to say this is probably quite a solidly built boat, yeah, whatever it is. The prop looks fine. I mean, they could come and, you know, get off all these barnacles while it's... <laughs> wow. Yeah, the keels. The keel at the back here is taking a bit of a knock as well. But... I can't really see any obvious signs of a of a hole other than maybe what's on the side there when you know it almost feels like if you could if you could reinforce it from the inside maybe with a spring tide and a bit of luck I want, it almost feels like some of these rocks somehow need to be moved out of the way I don't know like you bring a team of people over here and move some of these rocks and I feel like it could probably get out earlier potentially but it's still got all their like back to 50 I'm just wondering if there'd be some way to sort of prop this up. Yeah, get it upright. And get like a team of people to move this. I bet that rock weighs a ton. Oh my god. But like you'd a team. Need, you'd need, you'd need a like. Power boat or something to pull it? Or you'd need like three or four men, sort of like me, really, wouldn't you? Yeah, like, you'd need more than that. Or well, maybe five. Not five? Okay. Right. Damage, though. Is there? If you look here, you can see the lines go in round that rock. I can't see a hole though. I'm wondering whether this sort of seaweed is almost softening the edges of the rocks. Maybe. But the structures definitely. I feel a bit uneasy being stood underneath this yeah, thing. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna, even with the rock, all goodwill in the world, I think I'm gonna move. It's horrible seeing a boat like this and to think about the predicament that they were in. The, uh, it, do you know what? The, the real heroes in all of this are the RNLI, the lifeboat volunteers. Those guys are a charity. They don't get paid. They volunteer, and at like 11 o'clock at night, midnight, one in the morning, two in the morning, when the local lifeboat services are all overwhelmed, and these guys are coming out from the mainland. Imagine that for a second. You get a shout, you say good night to your family, you've got to go to work. You head out into the pitch of darkness, into gusts of up to Force 11, out for 30 miles in a sea state that must just resemble hell. And then when you get here, you're going into more treacherous situations like this, close into rocks, breaking seas, wrecked boats, and you have to rescue people. Those guys are absolute heroes. I, for one, I think we're both probably dead happy that they exist yeah. and they're here. Yeah. Still sad to see, though. Are you going to stay there? You two in your matching tops. <laughs> what is with the matching tops? No idea. Now, I didn't want to leave it there without addressing the clickbaity elephant in the room. And I just want to put my case forward for a good argument. 22 call-outs the British lifeboat teams had during that storm, not nationwide, but specifically just to the Isles of Scilly alone. This charity and the volunteers that make it up had 22 shouts out to where we were. And it's really, I know I've just mentioned it in the video, but I just really want to hit home just how important this really is, I think, to get you guys here. Now, I know some people are having a clickbaity aneurysm. Well, that vagabond hasn't been shipwrecked. And this is true. However, that ah. vagabond definitely did get <laughs> shipwrecked. So, apologies for anything to clickbait that got you here, but hopefully as many eyes as we can get on this video as possible will help to generate not just awareness for how treacherous and dangerous the Isles of Scilly can be. Don't underestimate how bad things can get there during bad weather, but also the volunteers that came out to save people's bacon. They're going out into the dead of night, into an absolute hellscape of a sea state, and then they're getting to these places which are even more treacherous to uh, put their life at risk to save us. These men and women rely 100% on charitable donations that are made to ensure that they've got the best possible equipment they can get, not only to do the job that they do to save us, but also to get themselves safely back to their families as well. So it's for that reason that I'm putting a button. I think in the video I said a super like button. It's not that. I'm going to put a specific donate to this charity button lower down in the video. So I know it's nearly Christmas time and some of you probably want to raid the shop that Carly's created, all the stuff that she's made. But just for this week, 
all we're saying is if you have a little something that you'd like to part company with then I think we should send it to the RNLI this week. What do you think? Well I will also be um, donating 20% of all my sales this week to the RNLI also. So if you want to donate or you also want to buy something from the shop I will give a donation towards the RNLI. Yeah. And we support the RNLI directly anyway. I think some of your former family members names now reside on the side of the, uh, they do, yes. the lifeboats. Yeah. So yeah, we support them however we can. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're really glad that people like this exist. We're really lucky to have them. And uh, yeah, everything we can do, including this video, including the donation button to help keep them there. Well, that's my case for making the clickbaity video. I hope you can forgive us for it. We we'll try not to lean into it too much, but uh, hopefully we can all agree yeah. it's, it's a worthy cause. Um, and just on that note, I also want to thank Tracy for this amazing Christmas tree that she sent us. <laughs> yes, yeah, and Mads and Ava for Mads, making yes. some of the decorations as well. Also, yeah. also very cool. Yeah, love that. So thank you for that also. <laughs> okay, so that's it from us this week, guys. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if not, maybe learn something from it. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. See you next time. All right.